Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very little little guy, the Leatherman Skeletal KB. Um, first off, I want to thank my buddy Tony of Everyday Commentary for recommending this knife to me actually on Gear Geeks Live. Um, it's an interesting little knife, wouldn't have heard about it without him. Um, second, I apologize for the glove on one side. Turns out when you're a professional hand model like myself, eczema can be an ugly little problem, so let's go ahead and hide that. And then uh, finally, let's do a size comparison for you real quick. This is not a very large tool. Uh, what we've got here, uh, we'll compare against the Spyderco Delica. So you can see that, especially in the handle, the, uh, the skeletal is freaking tiny. Uh, right here against your Spyderco Dragonfly. It's another very, very small knife. Really, really small. Uh, let's see here, Ontario Rat number one and Rat number two, of course, why not? And, uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for size comparison. And uh, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of your Skeletal KB. Okay, so on the good side, first off, I do very much appreciate the smaller size. There are way too few knives being made these days in small sizes, and so this is nice. That's very good. Um, next thing, I gotta say, um, I love the fact that this knife feels like it was actually designed. It's very, very common, especially for small sorts of knives, to be underdone where it's just like some guy at the factory drew something that looked like a knife and but this really it feels like there was a designer at the helm trying to do things like okay i'm gonna have parallel holes on the blade and back here or i'm gonna try and do some kind of a symmetry a little bit of harpoon a little bit of swedge i mean somebody was thinking about this design as they did it and i appreciate that very much i don't love every choice but it's clear that somebody was trying very hard to make something cohesive so that's good next thing when this guy is actually open this is actually surprisingly ergonomic um, you've got, you know, maybe three and a half finger grip on this guy, but when you, when it's open, it feels pretty good. It's not going anywhere, or the, the lock is pretty solid. No, no real complaints about that, and so that's, that's a very nice little thing. I mean, I, I thought that this would just feel incredibly tiny when open, but uh, it turns out that it feels pretty decent. The balance on it is actually pretty good as well balance point is right about in this region here, which is right about where you'd want it. So, no real complaints there whatsoever. Next thing, um, it is actually disassemblable. Um, this is kind of weird, but uh, that's something I always appreciate very much, especially with a very open pivot construction like that. All it takes is, you know, some apple juice to get up in there and you got a sticky mess. And the fact that this is just a single T8 screw take the whole thing apart, can't really argue with that. So, that's nice. Next thing, the blade shape on it I actually like. There's some flat area, there's a little bit of belly up here, a little reverse tanto action going on, and it has a sharpening choil that is actually, you know, fully functional. The, the sharpening choil goes out past the end of the plunge grind, it, it works. So, I like the blade in that way a, a lot. They've done a nice job there. Next thing, this does actually include a cap lifter slash bottle opener on the back of it there, um, and it does actually work. You can see they've cut out a little area of the handle right here for it to be able to get in there. And, you know, the weird thing is it, it's not actually a pain in the neck. It doesn't, like, pinch at you poke at you particularly. The way they've done this design is very, very nice incorporating that. So that's good. Next thing, the little clip on this guy is nice actually because it's not that little of a clip. If we look at the clip here, you can see that the clip size, the actual sprung length of this clip is a little longer than your Spyderco Delica. Many of you are thinking, well, it's a small knife. Why do you want a clip that big? Well, it actually turns out that in the knife world, you probably want a bigger clip on a smaller knife because it gives you more security. It gives you more for the clip. Because if you've got like a little tiny freaking clip on a little tiny freaking knife, it's going to be very easy for it to slide at your pocket. So clip on this guy is great. Then finally, on the good side, the price is pretty solid. Um, you look at 25 bucks, which is a solid price point. Um, and especially for something that is reasonably well constructed, I can't really argue with it there. So um, that's that's a beautiful thing. Uh, so that to me is what's good about this knife, is that the price point is solid. The clip is actually very, very good. It includes a little bottle opener, which works. Blade shape works well. It's disassemblable. It's pretty ergonomic when it's open. And, you know, it's actually designed and it's a nice smaller size. Let's talk about what's great here. Look, for me, what is great about this knife, 100%, is the, the, the size. This is an incredibly compact knife. I mean, even against the Delica, which is one of the easier to carry knives out there, this is a fraction of the size and even a fraction of the thickness. Um, this is an incredibly thin, incredibly compact knife. It's also incredibly lightweight. Although it is mostly metal, you're coming in at 1.3 ounces, and that's the kind of weight at which it just doesn't freaking matter at all. 
um, the weight on this guy is A-OK. -okay. It carries basically like there is nothing at all in your pocket, and that's that's pretty great. And so that makes this a pretty solid knife uh, choice for, in a situation where ounces count. Um, you know, running, biking, backpack, and that kind of thing, although this probably isn't your primary backpack and knife, but what do I know? Who knows? Maybe a rub and backpacking. I think that's just called... Yeah, vagabonding. Anyways, whatever it is, um, good choice for that. So uh, there you go. Let's talk about what's bad. Okay, so on the bad side, first off, I'm not a big fan of the blade holes here. I mean, one of the opening holes, absolutely, but everything else just serves to crap, uh, uh, accumulate crap and crud and whatnot in there. They're not a design element I tend to love, and so that's a little nitpick, but it's not something I'm a big fan of. Next thing, um, the lockup on this knife, um, this is a line lock style knife, and you can see that the lockup here is at 100%, meaning that this lock bar actually cannot travel any further um, past the edge of the blade, and so, uh, you know, it's not a terrible safety issue because if it continues further it'll just hit the edge of this uh, pivot screw here but uh, it's not super reassuring we may end up with a little bit of vertical blade play as that lock wears in on this so I'd like to see a slightly better lock up than that Next thing, this is tip down only carry. I understand why they had to go there given the uh, the pocket clip here, but it isn't something I'm particularly in love with. Um, you know, whatever. Um, maybe they'll have to lose the cap lifter, but I really do prefer tip down, uh, tip up carry. Whatever. Not a big deal. This thing, though, is a big deal, and that is the steel. The steel on this knife is 420HC. Um, 420HC is not a very good steel. It doesn't hold an edge very well. It'll take a nice edge, but it is basically not adequate for everyday carry. Um, it, it will be okay if you're cutting an apple once a twice every couple of weeks, whatever. But the thing is, this is 2016, uh, 2017. Oh, my God. It's July. I don't even know what time it is. Anyways, um, this is 2017, and we need to be doing better than that, and especially in a tool where the only tool is the knife. Leatherman, come on. I know you've got 154 CM in your factories. You've got S30V in your factories. You need to be doing better on the steel here. This is a dedicated pocket knife, so you need to treat it like that and give it some real steel. Then finally, um, this knife is kind of weirdly thick behind the edge. It's not ground super, super thin. I mean, don't get me wrong, it cuts things, but it seems a little bit strange to me to have a very small, very svelte little knife like this guy and then grind it more like a beater than anything. So I'd like to have seen a slightly more hollow grind on this guy that really got to that, uh, that really thinned out this edge at the very end and made this a little slicing beast. Um, so, you know, that's not something I'm particularly in love with, and that, on the whole, is the bad here. That it's pretty thick behind the edge, that the steel is inadequate for everyday carry. If you're going to make this your only knife, just no leather, and you need to do better. Um, it is tip down only carry, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, the lockup is at 100%. Not a big deal, but it will result in some blade plays, things wear further. And then it does have the unnecessary blade holes that are just going to crap crud here. Let's talk about what's ugly. Okay, so on the ugly side, and this may be more a question of my personal skill than anything, but I found this knife a little bit difficult to manipulate one-handed because it is so small, so insubstantial. Now, mind you, you can absolutely do it. So here, if I put my thumb in here and then slide it out there, yeah, okay, we're good to go. And then if I slide my thumb in here, and not too close and then move my fingers back out of the way, I can absolutely do it. And even after using it more and more, carrying it more and more, it got a little bit easier to do that. But still, it's the case that as you, for instance, pop in this open, it's very easy for your fingers to slide off here. So you need to make sure you grab it against this clip here. But... And then you need to make sure that your thumb pad, as you're closing there, as you're open, it doesn't kind of come down onto the edge of the blade here, which is not a beautiful thing. And then once you got it open, you're fine, and now it's it's good to go. But then closing it, I found it very common that this uh, would kind of try and grab my finger in this little gap down here, and that's that's not great. And then I had to remember to move this finger out of the way before I closed. Basically, I found this knife extremely fiddly. Um, and I have smaller hands than most, so I'd like to think I've got a better chance than most. And I found myself, as I was carrying this, just defaulting to taking it out, doing a two-hand open, cutting it, then doing a two-hand close, because that just makes a whole lot more sense to me. And so, uh, you know, like I said, maybe if you're a surgeon in your part-time, in your uh, spare time, that is, but um, I, I just, I'm not a big fan of that. The, the fact that this is just so damn small that it makes life a little bit more difficult. 
Ah, there we go. At least for me. But again, you may be more skilled than I am. I sure hope you are. So, ah, uh, there you go. That's what's ugly. Is It's just so small and thin and tiny that it's a little bit hard to manipulate one-handed for me. Ah, uh, let's go to your final conclusion. Final conclusion, this is actually a very interesting little entry from Leatherman. And I think it's kind of a, it's nice to see another knife at that low end sort of $25-ish price point there. Um, and I think that for some niches, this could be a very nice tool. For instance, if you need something that is incredibly lightweight or incredibly compact, this could very easily go to the top of the list. This is about as small as a pocket knife can get and still be functional. And so where ounces count, this guy, well, has very few of them. So that's, that's very nice. Uh, and so for cyclists, for runners, maybe backpackers is a backup sort of tool. Or even as a knife to, like, throw in a first aid kit or something like that. I think this is pretty damn solid. Um, for everyday carry, like, this is my pocket knife style carry. I think it's okay in its niche. Again, it carries like a feather, and it will cut when you need it to. But it's also, like I said, it feels a little bit weirdly thick behind the edge for being as small a knife as it is. It's a little anemic in the steel. More than a little anemic, let's be real here. And at least for me, it's a little bit too fiddly and small to really count on for comfort happy one-hand opening. And so as a result, this is not a knife I would want to carry in my pocket on a regular basis. It just doesn't seem like it works in my hands. Again, you may have more skillful hands than I do. And so, I don't know. I mean, if you're just looking for a pocket knife, consider at this kind of price point, things like the Kershaw So Sweet, the Ontario Rat 2, um, or even the Humble Open Nell. And if you're looking for something that's very, very lightweight and small, the Spyderco Dragonfly, although much more expensive, is a much better knife overall. Um, but the thing is, if you need lightweight and you need thin above all else, and you'd rather come in at a pretty budget price, um, the, the, the KB might just be the Leatherman for you. So, uh, there you go. Hope this has been interesting for you, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.